Hey YouTube, how you guys doing today? Kevin here coming back at you with another video. Alright, so I took the the float bowl from the uh, Yamaha Chappie. It's a 1978 Yamaha Chappie, by the way. I forgot to tell you guys that um, on one of my other videos. So it is a 1978 Yamaha Chappie LB50. Okay, 50cc, fully automatic. You get the idea. All right, so we're working on the carburetor, and um, I, I talked to you guys about the the pin, how, how the uh, needle is supposed to be, and how it's supposed to look, and how to tell if it's bad, and um, how to look in the the jets with a flashlight and shine up through. And um, so you guys can see there is a little bit of white corrosion on it. It is so faint, I'm not even going to worry about it. I'm not going to go too crazy with that. Um, make sure, make sure you screw you have a blazer clean when you do this, guys. And as you can see, oh, wait a minute, hold on. There we go. Because it was cleaned in that cleaner, the, um, pilot jet came right out. Oh, looks like, yep, got it out. Okay. So, on, this is what I, this is what I gotta tell you guys. Okay, so... A lot of people look in the carburetor and see that you can see just light through it, which is good. That's great. But I want to talk to you guys about this part of it. This is overlooked. Okay. So see how the, it steps up right here. And then it goes into a thinner shaft and it's got holes in it. Now, a lot of people go, yeah, well, what is that all about? Well, I'm going to explain to you how this works. Okay. Here's a straw. And this straw right here is going to represent these air tubes right here in the front these are very much overlooked both of them okay and you'll see how they line right up with the uh the jets okay what that is is air has to get into the bowl if air can't get into the bowl it can't siphon the fuel up because it's just gonna it's gonna try to collapse itself, but because it's aluminum, it can't do that. So that is where this straw goes into play. It comes right up to there. Allows it air to come in into the bowl and suck it up through it, it creates the siphon effect. Okay? And the jet in the front of the cob, right here, these are little jets, these ain't this big. If you look further into them, you can see how they're really small. They're really small air jets, and they are metered to allow a certain amount of air in to suck the fuel up, okay, for a siphon effect. So keep that in mind. So these are very important to make sure that all your holes along the sides are clear, and to make sure that your jets in the front are clear. So for this inspection, I'll just use a, a flashlight. If I can get one to work. And I can see right in there. And these look very, very clear. I can see brass. You can't see them because of your... It's on a camera. You have to take my word for it. But they're very, very clear inside there. And I use a... This is what I was talking about. This is an ornament. Um, what do you call it? The hanger. And for you people who don't um, have Christmas ornaments. Or don't use these type of hangers. Maybe in other countries. You can use a wire. Strip a wire down. And take one strand of solid wire out. So you can put it inside there and clean them out. Okay. And I'm going to show you something. See how far it goes in? It goes right up to the jets. Okay. It goes right up to the jets. So you're going to want to make sure. And when you take that jet out. The pilot jet. And you put a flashlight on it. You can really see how much light comes through that. Okay. If you got your jet out. And there is no light coming through. Take that wire and go down through. Which is a little hard to do, but you can do it. And clean it out. Okay, so you get wire coming through. See the wire coming through right there? Okay. And that is how you would clean out the cob. And then you can use a flashlight again. And check it. It should be nice and bright. Look at that. Okay, 
Then you can put your jet back in. Now, typically, after you end up um, cleaning the carburetor, sometimes the um, cleaner itself will turn to jelly inside where the jets are. I'm going to remove the float again. Came right out that time. See that? And I'm going to take out the main jet. So I already put that back in. I didn't over tighten up the pilot jet. I put it in all the way, snugged it, and then gave it a good one. Grab the main the main jet and pull it off. Okay. You're going to do the same thing with the brass here. Typically what you're going to see on the brass is jelly. It's going to look like it's going to look like white or yellowish jelly. You're going to want to clean all that off and blow through and also make sure you can see light through the jet. And then when you take it off on this carburetor, you can see that's the whole it's the whole centerpiece you're cleaning. Okay, this is the tube. And you're going to want to look I know there's a lot of information I'm giving you guys. See this hole right here? That hole is where the needle from your slide goes inside. So that slide goes into here, that needle. Okay? You're going to want to make sure it's nice and smooth. It's not all destroyed, you know, all corroded and stuff inside there. You're going to want to make sure this is nice and clean. This is very overlooked, this orifice, okay? This orifice tube for your main jet, your main jet tube, okay? If... That has all kinds of corrosion, and it's all rough inside. When the fuel comes up out of the tube, it's going to come up all scatterbrained, okay? Or it can go off to one side. It won't be a smooth transition. So this right here can actually cause performance problems. So when the needle goes up inside of it, it slides into it. Um, I'll be right back. Okay. I'm going to use one of Peter's carburetors because it's right here. This is the needle I'm referring to, okay? This one is too big to go in here, I think. Yeah, here it goes. So, basically it's tapered right here. When it's when the slide is all the way down, it basically shuts off the airflow, shuts off the fuel from coming out. No fuel can come out of this, okay? It comes out of the pilot jet, all right? And that is from, it uses the pilot jet from idle, to a quarter throttle. After a quarter throttle, this right here opens up and then fuel starts to come out of here, around here. So you want to make sure that your needle and your guide or your orifice tube is clean and smooth and that your needle is straight. Okay, these are very these are very important performance problems that occur with carburetors and they're very very much overlooked. So that should be nice and smooth. And it should be clear of any debris. It should look brand new like it does right now. The jet comes out of here, but there is nothing in between here. So as long as it's clean, you're good to go. You don't have to remove the jet out of this holder. But if it's not, then you might have to remove it. But everything here is good, so I'm not going to remove it. I'm screwing it in. Giving it a little snug. Putting the float on there. Now, I'm not going to tell you what the adjustment, the um, float adjustment is on the LB50 or the LB80 because I don't have the repair manual. And I am not going to give you guys incorrect information. However... I will tell you this, that it should be level, okay? And whenever you measure a float, you go from the base with no gasket to the top of the float. This one right here was in perfect condition when I got it, and I'm going to leave it the way it is. I will get the specifications later on and then check it. Okay, so we're moving on past that. So right now... This video has covered your pilot jet, your main jet, and we're going to move on from there. Okay, so, I have discovered a problem with this carburetor, which I fixed off of camera. 
but I'm going to, I could, I tried doing a video on it, and because of the lighting, it just really didn't come out good, so I'm going to explain to you guys what I did, okay? So, this carburetor bowl, I have scraped it out as the best I could, there's still some, it's into the, uh, into the aluminum, if you will, okay? But it's, it's clean, I'm not going to worry about it. On inside here, there was a hole right there, okay? You see the shininess? See that little, looks like a circle right there? That was a pinhole. This right here is a, uh, a dimple. It's not a pinhole yet, okay? To do that, you just use a flashlight, and you can see that there's no hole, okay? So what I did to fix the hole, real simple, I used a torch. I held it back about 10 inches, okay? Not on it. That's too close. That's too close. About 10 inches just to, just to warm it up. So I warmed it up a little bit. Well, first, before I did any of that, I used some sandpaper. And I buffed it. I buffed it clean, okay? Buffed it, buffed it, buffed it. Buffed it so it was nice and shiny just like that, okay? Then... I warmed it up, okay, I let it cool for a second or two, I did it again, within a few, within a minute, you could actually burn a hole right through that with a regular propane torch or um, a map gas torch, okay, keep that in mind, this thing will melt fast, this is solder that they use on electronics, I don't have the specification, on it but it's really really thin solder and it's flux core okay that means the flux is actually built into the uh, solder I took a piece off I stuck it in the hole and I bent it over then while it was warm and I redid it again until it, until it turned into a bubble okay then at that point I used a small file and filed it down the bubble is just, it's going to make like a little solder ball right there. I, I ground it down a little bit until it was level with the body. And then I went back over it with the sandpaper. Or the, you know, the light stuff. And just kind of buffed it out. Until it was smooth. And that's it right there, see? And now it's in there. There's no leak. And that's what you end up with, okay? And then when you look in the inside, it looks just like that. There's literally no leak. So, check it. No leak. We're good. All right. So that's how you fix a pinhole and a float bowl. Say that ten times fast. Next thing I did was I took... My jet, my um jet. I took my um my hook, my ornament hook, uh, hook, and I cleaned out the jet inside here, and then I cleaned up down here, and then I took a straw. I pushed with my thumb like that, so it crimped in the middle, folded it over, then. Stick it in the hole as far in as you can get it. Hear that? I blew it out. And the jet is clear. So now, I have a clean bowl. This is as clean as it's going to get without replacing it. I have my jets are cleared. My float's good. I check my detent pin, and it is opening and closing. Where I'm looking at on that is right in the pin there. See the pin? And I can actually feel it detent in. So you can see the springiness on it right there. Boom, boom, boom. So that's all set. Floats move good. They're not leaking, which is a good sign. And then I take my bowl. The circle pot there goes with that little tube right there. Put that on like so. And 
and just put your four screws back in it. And that, my friends, is a good, complete carburetor right there that's going to go on that mini bike. So we have that all done. <sighs> wow, a lot of stuff going on, guys. A lot of stuff. So this um, video, when I did this on this carburetor, this is a Makuni, by the way. You see right there. Same style carburetor used on the... Um, what do you call it there? On well, the same kind, of, not the exact same car. But you can see how how small the throat is in that. But basically, it's the same size, same style carburetor. I'll right back. Okay, so it's basically the same style Makuni used on the KV75, the KE100, KD80, KM100, blah blah blah, whole bunch of them. This is the um, the one that came off of the bike we're working on right now, the Yamaha. Um, Chappy, and this is the R Yamaha RX50 have. So, they're pretty much covered all the Makunis on the small bikes. Um, I mean, you can see there's, there is differences in them. You know, obviously these are not the same, obviously not the same carburetor. You know what I mean? They are very, very close. The idle adjustment and all that is in the same. The bowl is basically the same shape. Um... But there is a lot of differences to it. Okay, choke is in the same spot. This would probably work on it. Uh, but we're not going to find that out. But it's pretty cool how they're pretty close. Same floats and everything else. So keep that in mind when, you, when you're doing watching these cob videos that I have. Because I try, to, I try to cluster them together. I try to use all the same things that flow on all the different style bikes together. So everything that we did on this carburetor right here would work on the RX50, RX80, the KE, the KD, the KM, the MC1, the um, Trail Boss 100, the, KV, the KV100. Then you got your KV75, which is basically the same carburetor. So you have a lot of, there's a lot of stuff that goes in between and they're all, all the same way. So each one of these has a pilot jet. Each one of these you see here has a main jet. Each one has a float set up. Each one gets checked and cleaned the exact same way. Once again, don't forget to check your front um, air intakes. They're very important. Um, not checking them can cause a big, big problem. If you guys have a fuel leak coming out of your bowl, you don't need to replace your bowl. You can make it look like that. Look at that, guys, huh? Came out pretty good. Um, I use solder. That's it. And a little bit of heat. Don't go crazy with the heat. Because um, you'll burn a hole right through it. You'll melt it down to a pile of nothing. And you'll be like, ah! And then you have to replace it. But, I mean, either way, it's junk. If you accidentally melt it, well, it had a hole in it anyway. You couldn't use it to begin with. Guys, you see a lot of people, they put a screw through it. A screw. I, I, oh, my God. It drives me crazy. Oh, it's got a hole in it? We'll plug it with a screw. And they'll put a self-tapping screw in it. Well, hold on. A screw can actually puncture one of the pontoons inside the float. So, if you did that, then the bike's going to run. You're going to have fuel coming over here. Kevin, what happened? What's going on? Well, you punctured a, a, a float. Now you're looking at a float and a bolt. Take the time. Fix it right. The stuff is out there. It's an easy fix. Um, don't go crazy. Like, oh, my God. What am I going to do? And if there's a little bit of white corrosion in there, it's not going to kill you. Okay, it's stained into the thing. I scraped it out. Use the edge of a, a screwdriver. Get out as much as you can, and then it's as clean as it's gonna go. Okay, it's not. You're all right. Okay, if it's a little bit of tinged white, don't freak out. It's not the end of the world. I can't get this out with my ultrasonic cleaner. I put it in the dip, and it's still doing it. I took sandpaper to it, guys. It's just into the metal. That's it. That's all it is. Scrape out all the heavy, clean it, done, 
You can use carburetor cleaner, you can use WD-40, you can use anything you want. Using vinegar on these will, de will eat the metal, okay? Do not clean a carburetor with vinegar. I tried it as an experiment with an old destroyed carburetor to begin with, and it basically dissolved it. Um, vinegar, no. Don't do it. Not worth it. So, anyway, that's what I got for you guys. Um, this is part two of the last video. Um, and this is for my wife, so it's top secret. This is a top secret build we're doing. So I want her to uh, have the experience. This is a vent tube, by the way, so it doesn't really go to anything. Um, I want her to have that great experience So um, that we have on our bikes. So this is for my wife. So nice, clean carburetor. It's all good. Guys, thank you for all your support once again. Thank you for viewing the channel. If you're new here, welcome. Thank you. Um, I really appreciate all you guys, and you guys gave some great comments. And um, you guys are very welcome, by the way. You guys are very welcome um, for doing these. I, I get a lot of thank yous. And I, I'm the one who should be thanking you guys because it's your support that allows me to keep these videos going. Um, once again, I've got the ads on there, but we're not making no money on doing this. This is, it, it, we're literally, everything you see here is out of pocket. Okay, nothing, I'm not sponsored by anybody. I legit am doing it all out of pocket. And I'm doing these videos and I'm sharing my knowledge. And I literally am not getting paid for this. What I get paid for is it takes about three months to actually get any money um, from it. Because they won't release it until you get a $100 threshold. So it takes about three months of all these videos and all the views. You would think that I would have some money by now, but no, it really, it really doesn't. Um, the amount of money that we make from YouTube um, literally doesn't cover a third of what we do. So I do rely on a lot of friends and family to uh, help out. Um, a lot of people send me parts and pieces, and um, that has been a huge help. A lot of people have extra pots kicking around, like I'm working on the chappy, and um, someone will send something for it, you know what I mean, as a thank you. And I get a lot of those those type of messages, you know, hey, what's your address? You know, I'm going to send you something. And so I'll text my address, and a lot of people get in touch with me through um, Facebook, you know, Facebook Messenger. And it's, hey, I see you working on that. Well, I have this extra part, and they throw it in, you know, which is awesome. You know, I help them out with the bikes, and I get a lot of that. So, I do get a lot of fan mail and stuff like that, and I appreciate that. That's really awesome. I get a lot of thank yous. So, I just want to say thank you to you guys, because, like I said, without you guys, this channel is not possible. And we're a growing channel, and we're doing some really cool stuff. So, we're going to keep doing cool stuff. We're going to keep doing modifications. We're going to keep building the bikes, and we really don't care what uh, YouTube says. Or how much they pay. We're just going to keep doing it. Because we're having fun. And that right there at the end of the day. At the end of the day. I want you guys to have the same experience with your bike. As I do. And a lot of you guys. I, I love it when you guys text me. Kevin thanks to you I got my bike running. Well no it actually. A lot of it is you. You guys yourselves. You guys get the courage to go out there. And turn the wrenches on your bike. I, I'm your wingman. But inevitably you guys are the one turning the wrenches. And you guys are asking the questions. See, that's called learning. This is a learning channel, and that's what I'm doing. I'm teaching you guys how to do all this stuff, <coughs> which is awesome. But the mechanic is you. I'm, I'm the instructor. I'm the teacher. By the time you guys get done, you guys got a, a running bike that you guys did with your own two hands. Two hands. That's great. So... Anyway, I just wanted to say thank you guys once again. Thank you for all my subscribers. Thank you for all your support and awesome comments. Um, it, it really means a lot to me, especially when, you know, doing these videos and stuff. And it's just, it's just really a, a big help. So anyway, guys, a little long-winded there. Thank you, and I will talk to you guys later. Have a great day.